Good day to everyone. Welcome back to our video. By the way, my name is Ariel Paolo Vitigali, a teacher intern in College of Education under Mrs. Marietta D. Pagadua. For this video, we're going to learn new lesson about behavioral learning tree. So, let's start. Have you experienced being blamed or accused of the things you did not make? Or being accused of the bad things happens that you are not part of it and that you are innocent? Or being included to the consequences because you are part of the group? Yes, I am in my high school life when my friends decided to break the mirror glass in the comfort room without a valid reason. No, I was there when it happened, but I am not part of doing such thing, a quick a mirror class. My friends and I was summoned in guidance office for that incident. We are being counseled and signed an agreement stating repeat the same mistake will lead us to expel from this. I know for myself that I am innocent. I am not a bad person as what they think about it. They were unfair because they did not consider my explanation. They judged the event as a full picture not by the specific person. They considered it as done by group, not by individual person. Today, our topic has a principle of seeing things as a whole and not just the sum part of it. It is the gestalt theory, the insight learning. Let us learn about this theory and its law. Also, knowing how to apply it in real life situation. According to the Just Talk psychologists, notably Max Wilhelmer, Wolfgang Kohler, and Kurt Polka, certain features in visual perception are universal. We can say that they are in me, they don't have to be taught. Such theories are known as sensual theories. Sensual theories are of a lower order of thinking than perceptual theories. To understand more clearly, let us briefly look at the experiment behind this theory. So, one of the gestalt psychologists named Kohler conducted several experiments on chimpanzee named Sultan. Sultan. Sultan was put inside the cage and will be presented with a problem that is not easy to solve such as placing food in an area that is too high to reach. Kohler would also place a box or sticks inside the cage to observe Sultan and the existence of insects. For instance, in one of the experiments, Kohler hung banana from the roof, from the roof of the cage of such a height that Sultan could not reach it even by jumping up. So a box was also placed inside the cage. After many attempts, though what we call trial and error, Sultan seemed to contemplate for some time and suddenly Sultan used the box as a platform to reach the banana to this picture. Kohler argued that it was not because of trial error method for solving the problem but a sudden insight after contemplating. So what is insight learning? Insight learning refers to the sudden realization of the solution of any problem. It is eureka or it is aha moment. It is not the result of prior and error or responding to stimulus. It is a cognitive experience to visualize a problem, things and get insight or find solution to solve a problem. The German word gestalt can be translated to means form, pattern, configuration. This configuration or pattern offers an organization to perception which the individual experiences. Gestalt theories follow the basic principle that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. In other words, the whole picture of the car carried a different and altogether greater. Meaning that its individual components such as paint, canvas, brush, or tire 
Saint Meta respectively, imbuing the whole a cognitive process place the mind makes a leap from understanding the parts realizing the whole. Perhaps the best known example of a gestalt is the waste space profile which is fully explained in the five principles detailed for the following slides. However, it is important to note that while gestalt psychologists call these phenomenal laws, our more accurate term would be principles of perceptual organization. These principles are much like heuristic, which are mental shortcuts for solving problems. There are several principles that gestalt theory defines. The main ones are law of similarity, law of proximity, law of continuation, law of closure, and law of figure and graph. The first one is law of similarity. As gestalt principles go, the principle of similarity would seem to be one of the simplest to grasp. It states things that are similar are perceived to be more related than things that are dissimilar. Similarity of mirrors when objects look similar to one another. People perceive them as group or pattern. We would probably describe what we see as four rows of letter, four rows of letter instead of six columns of letter because we tend to group similar things into full set. That's the law of similarity. Similarity means there is a tendency to see groups which have the same characteristics. Pieces that are similar are grouped together, mostly vertical columns of circle and squares. The principle of similarity states that things which have visual characteristics such as shape, size, texture, value, or orientation be seen as belonging together. The next law is the law of proximity. Proximity occurs when elements are placed close together. They tend to perceive as a group. The principle of proximity or continuity states that things which are closer together will be belonging together. The position of elements help to portray a relationship between the separate parts. Things that are close to one another are perceived to be more related than things that are space parted apart, as this principle does not rely on any extraneous structure. It is among the first principles to impact our perception and from which we derive understanding. All of us intuitively understand that the simplest way to indicate relatedness is to manipulate proximity. What we might not intuitively understand, however, is how powerful the principle of proximity is. In the example, proximity clearly indicates relatedness and relative association. Near objects grouped together, we perceive one group of circle going vertical to the other horizontal. And another example is the 15 figures form a unified group, the shape of a tree, because of their proximity. Elements that share uniform visual characteristics are perceived as being more related than elements with disparate visual characteristics. Next law is the, no the law of continuity. Continuity occurs when the eye is compelled to move through one object and continue to another object. Objects are learned with ease that have continuity because they easily make a whole. Continuity occurs in the example because here in the example because the viewer's eye will naturally follow the line of view. The smooth flowing crossbar of the H leads the eye directly to the map only. Next example is this. Pieces in smooth continuation are grouped together. Most people view the lower line next to the red arrow as it continues. Next law is the law of closure. 
Log closure occurs when an object is incomplete or a space is not completely enclosed. If enough of the shape is indicated, people perceive the whole by filing the missing information in full. The principle of closure is much weightier. When looking at the complex arrangement of individual elements, human tends to first look for a single recognizable pattern. Look for the example here. Missing elements are supplied to complete familiar figure. We perceive an illusionary triangle and a pyramid in the screen. Next example. Although the panda here is not complete enough, it's present for the eye to complete the shape. When the viewer's perception completes a shape, closure appears. If enough of the shape is indicated or hinted, the viewer will subconsciously fill in the missing information. Same goes for this light bulb here. For this example, clearly there is nothing going on. There is no connection between the screw and the bulb portions of the design. However, because of the implication we perceive it to be true, we perceive a relationship between this man gaps of his hand and the proof of this light bulb. The last law is the law of figure and ground. Our perception of the figure and ground relationship allow us to organize what we see by how each object relates to others. It allow us to determine what we're supposed to look at and what we might simply ignore. We do instantly and without effort in most cases, as we're often in familiar surroundings and looking at familiar things. A simple example of figure and ground relationships. When we view as figure, this one, face or waist, stand out in front of the background. This perception is not stable and oscillates back and forth between face and waist. Another example is balancing figure and ground can make the perceived image clearer. This one. Using an unusual figure ground relationship can add interest and subtly to an image. In this image, the figure and ground relationship change as the eye perceives the form of a shape or the silhouette of a face. In conclusion, the gestalt theory purpose that an individual is a whole person and the instructional strategies used to teach them will help to discover if there is anything that is mentally blocking them from learning certain new information. Teaching strategies are used to present problem as a whole and to attempt to remove any mental block from the learner so that new information can be stored. Designing instructional strategies that take into consideration the learner's past and current experiences and perception is the key to teaching new information. In gestalt learning theory, when the learners come across information, or concepts that are not organized, the mind organized it in an attempt to enable the learners to recognize and apply the concept being taught. It is also the same thing to God when it comes to just that basic principle that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. God does not look for the sin we committed against to him, he does not look to each sin, particular specific sin we made against to him. God does not look us in our sinful nature. According to 1 Samuel 16 verse 7, But the Lord God said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. God hates the sin but loves the sinner. He doesn't look in an outward appearance but look in inward appearance. Let us guard our hearts and abide to our God only as we learn more lessons daily. That's all for our video today. 
about the gestal theory, the insight learning. Thank you for listening and see you for the next lesson. Bye-bye!